Anchor Corner with John Breach. Breach, tell us what's the news. This is my favorite segment of the podcast every week, even though it's the first time we've ever done it. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start with Will Lutz, who I should have brought up on the podcast yesterday. I can't believe it because this – I didn't because this was the – this has been the, the wildest sequence – uh, of free agency so far, even though it only involved a kicker. So here's what happened with Will Lutz. At 2.18 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, there was a report that Will Lutz has agreed to a two-year deal in Jacksonville. Yay! Jacksonville has a new kicker. Uh, he's going to move his family there. They're all happy. Except they're not all happy because Will Lutz is not Jacksonville's kicker now. Less than three hours later, it turned out that Will Lutz decided he did not want to play for Jacksonville and that he wanted to stay in Denver. So now Will Lutz is back in Denver on a three-year deal. Again, this is the tampering period, so no contracts are signed. If you don't want to play for a team you agreed to deal with, then you just tell them bye. So he was on Pat McAfee's show today. I just caught a couple clips. And he's like, look, he's like, I'll own it. He's like, there was a miscommunication from some – he didn't say it was his agent. He just someone, somebody on our, on, on my team that basically was like, all right, they tweeted, texted rap sheet. was like, we got to deal with the Jaguars. I would guess that it was probably leverage because apparently the Broncos hadn't gotten as high as, as Lutz wanted. And Sean Payton's probably like, F you, he's a kicker. Like, we're not doing that. And George Payton's talking to the agents. So like, all right, we're going to Jacksonville. Jacksonville agrees to the deal. And then the Broncos are like, no, 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 fine, fine, fine. We'll give him what he wants. And so he bailed on it. And uh, I think Lutz said he was like, he found out that he was going to Jacksonville through a bunch of congratulations texts after people saw the rap sheet tweet. What's next? Yeah, there's, there's nothing better than that, oh, right? Sorry. Like it's no, I'm just saying there's nothing better than social media congratulations being like, what? No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do that. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> it's like, wow, thanks, bro. Like, all right. Well, and to that uh, point, the, to that point, yeah. oh, the miscommunication did feel a little bit like he was throwing his. I saw the McAfee interview. That it felt like he was throwing his agent under the bus. Like, hey, man, I yeah. didn't tell you to sign off on that yet, and. Uh, again, though, he has been in the NFL for eight seasons. He's been with Sean Payton for seven of those eight seasons. So I think that also played a big factor. It was, hey, Sean, just give me a little bit more money because I want to stay in yeah, Denver. Look, Sean, give me that Walmart money, dude. What's your problem? Like, what are you, what are you doing? All right. Also, Sean, also, like, what, what better place to kick than Denver? Yeah. And meanwhile, Sean Payton's like, dude, I got an 80, $85 million cap hit because this Russ clown. Like, That's, like, I, I got to cut money wherever I can, Will. I need <laughs> yeah. you to take a $100,000 pay cut because of Russell Wilson's $85 million. All right. Next up, we have Greg Zerline, re-signs with the Jets, two years, $8.4 million. This was easy to see coming. The only reason this is interesting is because Aaron Rodgers literally went on a podcast last week and was like, all right, we need to re-sign Greg Zerline, Thomas Morissette. So we know who runs this franchise because – Less than five days later, Zerline is re-signed. The Buccaneers did the same thing. They re-signed Chase McLaughlin. Remember, after they drafted Roberto Aguayo, they had some kicking struggles for a good chunk of time. Ryan Suckup came in, kind of fixed things, but he couldn't hit from long distance, and now they have McLaughlin. So smartly, uh, they re-signed him for three years. Now, we have a kicking change in Washington. They had Joey Sly. They have now signed Brandon McManus. They're going to let Joey Sly walk away in free agency, which is a very interesting choice. They have about the same career field goal percentage, but I think this one came down to what these guys do on extra points. Sly missed three last year, hit just 91%. Brandon McManus was perfect on extra points. He struggled from beyond 52 yards, but was pretty good from inside that. Uh, big one here, guys. Okay, you ready for this? Tommy Townsend, all pro punter for the Kansas City Chiefs, is leaving Kansas City. He signed with the Houston Texans. That is a big the, deal. That is a big deal for two reasons, because the Texans just got an all pro punter. Number two, the punt god, Matt Ariza, is the only player left on, the only punter left on the Chiefs roster. He has not punted ever in an NFL game, because remember, he had the legal situation he was dealing with. He punted in one preseason game after being drafted by the Bills in 2022. So he has literally been out of football for two years, and the Chiefs are putting all their eggs in that basket right now. Maybe they bring someone in for training camp. Maybe they don't. But right now, the punt god is the only punter on the Chiefs roster. Uh, the Vikings had Greg Joseph last year. Right now, they decided to go the XFL route with John Parker Romo. He has never kicked a field goal in the NFL game. So it'll be interesting to see if they stick with him or if that's one of those leverage plays where they say, all right, Greg Joseph, you can come back, but you got to come back at our price. Uh, and then, of course, Keyshawn Nixon, not a kicker, but returning as the returner for mm. the Packers. That guy is a home run threat, three years, 18 million. So I think that's another good signing for Green Bay, who has been on fire.
That you can't get caught in a jet.